Hi everyone. Part of your assignment for today is to complete this Google form, which is all about experimental design. As you go through this, and you can see it right here about this form, in this form, you have to get the right answer to continue. If you click on the wrong answer, it will not let you proceed. So the form isn't broken, it just means that the answer that you chose is not the correct answer. So you're gonna have to continue to go back until you find the right answer. So if you choose the wrong answer, you can't proceed, you cannot go on to the next question. It's gonna keep you on that original question until the right answer is chosen. So let's see. Do you understand the rules listed above? Choose the answer that says yes. So just to show you, I'm gonna click no. And if I hit next, oh no, it didn't let me proceed because I chose the wrong answer. So the right answer here is choose the answer that says yes. So I'm gonna click yes this time. I'm gonna hit next. And this time I was able to move on to the next question. So. As you're going through this, please just understand that the form isn't broken. It just means that the answer that you chose is not the correct one. And it's going to keep you on this question until you choose the right one. So for this first experimental design scenario, we're going to read the actual scenario together. And then we're going to try and figure out the independent variable, dependent variable, controls, and constants. So for this first experiment, Students are studying about recycling. Members of John's biology class investigated the effect of various recycled products on plant growth. John's lab group compared the effect of different aged grass compost on bean plants. Because decomposition is necessary for the release of nutrients, the group hypothesized that older grass compost would produce taller bean plants. Three flats of bean plants, a flat is just like an area where people would plant like a garden area. So three flats of bean plants, 25 plants in each flat were grown for five days. The plants were then fertilized as follows. In the first flat, flat A, 450 grams of three month old compo compost was used. In flat B, 450 grams of six month old compost was used. And in flat C, zero grams of compost were used, right? So no compost was used in flat C. The plants received the same amount of sunlight and water each day. And at the end of 30 days, the group recorded the height of the bean plants in centimeters. So our first question is, what is the independent variable in this experiment? Remember that independent variable, the I in IV means I changed something. So, I want you to think, what did I change in this experiment? Well, if we go back up and we're reading through it, we know that John, members of John's biology class investigated the effect of various recycled products on plant growth. Okay, so various recycled products. There's something going on here. And as we look at the three different flats and what happened there, we can see that in flat A, we had three month old compost. In flat B, there was six month old compost. And in flat C, there was no compost. So let's look at those answers and see if we can figure out which one is the correct one. So the height of the bean plants, well, we know it's not that because we were just talking about it has something to do with compost. So as we go through, we see that there's this answer, the amount of compost used on each flat, the number of beans, water of sunlight, amount of sunlight, the age of the compost, and the bean plants grown without compost. So let's think about these two, the amount of compost used and the age of the compost. If we go back up, we can see that in flat A, there was 450 grams. In flat B, there was 450 grams. Flat C had no compost at all. So let's just start comparing flat A and flat B. Well, it's the same amount. The only difference is the age of the compost. So the difference here is the age 
of the grass compost. Well, we know that I'm not going to be able to move on unless I got this right, so let's just see if I got it right. All right, it looks like I did because I'm on the next question now. So we can see that the only thing that was changed in this experiment is how old the compost was, right? We went from three month to six month. So that is what John's biology class was changing, was the, um, the age of the compost. So now let's talk about dv, which is the dependent variable. In this case, the dependent variable is like the data that you gather. So what is John's biology class measuring at the end of this experiment? Well, we can see the effect of various rice cycle products on plant growth. Okay, plant growth. How is John's biology class measuring plant growth? If you read this again, and I already read it once, so I'm not going to do that again, but you can see the last sentence says, at the end of 30 days, the group recorded the height of the plants in centimeters. Well, that certainly sounds like data that's being collected. So let's see if that's a possible answer. And what do you know? The very first thing is the height of the bean plants. We know that John's biology class is measuring and collecting plant growth. And we know that because of the last sentence, we know that John's biology class is specifically measuring the height of bean plants in centimeters. So none of these other options talk about the height, but we do see how long the bean plants grew. But nothing in the scenario talks about time, like how long the plants were grown for as being something that they're measuring. Okay, it does say that they were grown for five days, but it doesn't say that somewhere that that is what the information that they were recording is. All it says is that the gr group recorded the height of the plants. So let's see if that one's correct. And it was, because we're on our third question. So now, a constant is something that you keep the same throughout the entire experiment. So this is something that you don't change at all. So let's look. In here, we've got three flats of bean plants. Okay, 25 plants in each flat. That's something that is consistent across all the flats. And they were grown for five days. That's something else that is pretty consistent, right? Some were grown for different amounts of days. They were all grown for the same amount of time. The plants were then fertilized in different ways. So that can't be a constant because these are different, right? Three month is different from six month is different from no compost. So, so far we've got the amount of plants, how long they were grown for, and that the plants received the same, keyword same, amount of sunlight and water each day. So which of these is not held constant in this experiment? So the amount of compost used on each flat, the water, how long the bean plants grew, the age of the grass compost, the number of bean plants in each flat, the amount of sunlight. Now we've already talked about this. For the flats that were using compost, both flats got 450 grams. The water each flat received is the same. How long the plant, bean plants grew was five days. The age, didn't we already have this as an answer for something else? Oh yeah, we did. The age of the compost was the independent variable, which means that by definition, it is what's been changed, which means that it could not have been held constant. So I'm feeling really good about this answer, but let's just make sure that the other two aren't right. The number of bean plants grown, okay, that was 25 in each flat, and the amount of sunlight each flat received. We know that that was all the same. So let's see if this one is correct. And it was. We're moving on to the next question. So a control. A control in an experiment is something that you use to make sure basically that your experiment worked correctly. It's the most normal version of an experiment and it's basically whatever you don't add your independent variable. 
So in this case, if our independent variable is the different ages of the compost, we know that our answers are probably going to be somewhere in these types of flats. So flat A got 450 grams of three month old compost, flat B 450 grams of six month, and then flat C is zero grams of compost. So we know that the independent variable is the age of the compost, and we know that the control, which is what we're looking for, is the most normal version of the experiment, what you compare your results to, and typically does not have the independent variable added to it. So in this case, the only one of these flats that does not have the independent variable added to it is flat C, because it doesn't have any compost added to it. So let's take a peek at those answers and see where we're at. So what is the control? The number of bean plants grown? No, we know that's a constant. The flavor of the bean plants, that doesn't even get brought up in this whole scenario. So that's just a trick, right? It's trying to throw you off because nowhere in there does it talk about flavors of bean plants. Uh, the water each flat received, we know that's a constant. The age of the grass compost, that's our independent variable. That can't be the control because that's already the independent variable. The bean plants grown without compost, oh, that sounds like flat C. So let's just make sure that that's the right answer and there's not something that's better. How long the bean plants grew? Well, we already know that that wasn't measured. The amount of compost used, that's a constant. The amount of sunlight, that's a constant. And the height of the bean plants, well, that's our dependent variable. So it looks as though this is our control. But you know how this form works. If I'm not right, I'm not going to be able to move on to the next question. Oh my gosh, let's see. I was able to move on to the next question, so I was correct in our control. Remember that the control is your most normal version of an experiment. It is something that typically doesn't get the independent variable added to it, and in this case it was flat C with zero grams of compost. Now, our final question for this little uh, scenario, you will continue on. I'm only helping you with the first one. But our last question is, how would the results of this experiment be recorded? Either qualitatively or quantitatively. Remember that the difference here is the quality, right? The, with the L, the qualitative results talk about how things look, how they appear, the L, in qualitative is like how they look, right? The L and look. So like you could say that something was uh, a deeper shade of red. That would be a qualitative uh, piece of data that you would be collecting. Quantitative, the N in quantitative, deals with numbers. So when you have a quantitative result, that would be like something is five inches away from, from whatever, okay? So quantitative deals with numbers, qualitative deals with looks. And oh, I don't even have to scroll up because that last sentence is still on the screen. So at the end of the day, remember that the results of the experiment is your dependent variable. So we already know our dependent variable is the height of the plants in centimeters. So he's recording the height. Well, do you record the height using looks or do you record it using numbers? Hopefully you all said numbers, right? Height is, especially in centimeters, would be recorded in numbers. So I think I got this right, but let's just double check. And what do you know? I'm moving on to experiment two, so I definitely got it right, which means that so far I'm five for five. I'm doing great at this. So hopefully you guys are able to continue on and finish the remaining four experiments. You're going to do exactly what I did. You're going to read through the scenario, answer the IV, the DV, the constants, the control, and what type of data you're collecting for all five of them. And remember, if you get it wrong, it's going to push you right back to the same question until you're able to get it right. Once all of your five experiments are done, make sure you hit that submit button. That way I get a notification that you finished. That way I know that you're all set, okay? 
Good luck, everyone. And if you have other questions, feel free to send me an email. I'll see you on Friday.